Hi, today I would like to talk about scales, or to be more precise about the eight church modes, you know, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, and so on. They do show up quite a lot in the menus and settings of your synths, so if it's not entirely clear to you what they sound like and how this all works, this is definitely for you. I will try to focus mainly on how each of them sounds. However, this will involve a little bit of music theory. So if you have a basic understanding of how intervals work, this will definitely be helpful. Before I get started, let's maybe take a second to talk about what a scale actually is. I think it's easiest described as a set of intervals which repeats after one octave. In some synths, instead of getting to pick just a scale by name, we get to put together those sets of intervals ourselves. So let's, for example, have a look at the variegate here, which does it like that. We get to pick whether we want the root in the scale and then plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So here's how I have this set up. I've got a sequence with twelve steps and I tuned each step to a different semitone in ascending order. Here I'm setting it to random. And now you can see it's jumping all over the place. Back in the quantizer menu, the little red LEDs on the sliders tell us that currently all 12 semitones are on. By moving the sliders to the left, I can turn individual intervals off. By moving a slider back to the right, I can add an interval. So here I'm adding a fifth or root plus seven. Plus four, which is a major third. Plus 11, a major seventh. And plus two, plus six, and plus nine which gives us the first scale I want to look at, the Lydian mode. I'll be using this same random sequence from the variegate for all examples of the scales, hoping it'll make it easier to compare. I did add a little bit of LFO modulation on the filter of the Dubfa miniature synth voice here, which is playing the notes that are coming from the variegate, trying to make the ARP a little less obnoxious, and I added a little bit of reverb and delay. The variegates quantizer is still set to the intervals of the Lydian scale. Let's have a look one more time at what they are. The root, root plus two, plus four, plus six, plus seven, plus nine, plus eleven. I'm gonna add a pad playing a C major seven chord now on the mini law. This way we can hear how the notes of the scale sound in relation to the chord. Let's just listen for a bit to get a feel for what this sounds like. I'm gonna add a bass note to make the root note more obvious. The nice thing about the Lydian scale is that it is full of fifths. This comes in really handy when we're making music with the synthesizer, because one thing we like to do with synths is adding fifths. I'm doing just that here, tuning oscillator 2 to a fifth. You can hear how all the newly added pitches fall nicely within the scale. Depending on the oscillator mix, the bass chord or the upper structure chord takes priority. This to me sounds very Lydian. To me it's a very open, bright and chill sound. All notes floating freely above ground, nothing there to pull them down. I'm gonna improvise a little bit on top of this. Note how all of the notes work nicely on top of this. None of them seem to be asking for a quick resolution. This is because the Lydian mode consists just of a bunch of fifths. If I start with the root note and keep stacking fifths, 
I get all the notes of the Lydian mode. Here's what it looks like on the piano with all the notes within one octave. Again, listen how every one of these notes sounds completely at ease here. So yeah, this is Lydian. I hope this gives you a good feel for the very relaxed character the Lydian mode most often has. So let's go back to the piano now and move on to the next mode. The next one sounds just a tiny bit darker than the Lydian and it is Ionian or just the major scale. We get to this one by lowering this top note by one semitone. Pay attention to that last note. Can you hear how it sounds more dissonant than the rest? Put back in order, you can easily see that this is just all the white keys on the piano. The notes of a C major scale. I'm adjusting the quantizer on the variegate here to get the same interval structure. Let's have a listen to this. I'm using a slightly different bass pattern here, but still only consisting of root notes. The Ionian mode, in my opinion, has the least character of them all. I guess this is due to the fact that we're just so used to hearing it. To me, it's best characterized as sounding normal and a bit bland. Yet, it sounds quite different from the Lydian scale we heard before. To my ears, it sounds friendlier and more cheerful. I didn't try to make this example sound so uninspired on purpose. Yet, I'm kinda glad it turned out this way. It somehow reflects the character this mode has to me. Let's maybe talk for a moment about the dissonance this newly introduced F creates. Its source is mainly the minor second it creates with the E, which is part of the C major chord. These kinds of intervals we sometimes also call avoid notes. Listen to how the F really wants to be resolved to an E. One more time, F to E. It is, however, always fine as a passing note. It is, nevertheless, what sets the scale apart from the Lydian scale. But let's move on now to our next scale. The next one up is Mixolydian. I get to this by not only lowering the F sharp to an F, but also lowering the second note from the top from B to B flat. Again, pay attention to the increased tension this leads to. Let's squeeze all the notes back into one octave. This gives us the interval structure of Mixolydian. I'll apply it to the variegate quantizer. Adding again a root note bass and a pad thing up top. I chose a sequence of duophonic voicings here instead of a static chord. The characteristic note here is the B flat, so let's hear it right away.
Unlike the F, the B flat is not an avoid note here. It is only a semitone above the neighboring A, but that A is not part of the underlying chord. That's the chord you get by stacking thirds onto the root within one octave. The B flat is actually part of that chord, so it can't be an avoid note. But the B flat does create dissonance within that chord. The source of that tension is the tritone between B flat and E. The term dominant chord has its origin in functional harmonics, where it is implied that this chord needs to be resolved. The mentioned tritone is the driving force here. The B flat is pushed towards the A and the E towards the F, which leads us to an F major chord. This is quite different from what I'm doing in that track that's still playing in the background here. I'm just staying on that same chord forever. The idea here is more to embrace dissonances that might occur and explore how each note sounds. One might call this modal as opposed to functional. So now that I just threw those terms at you, it might be a good moment to talk about them just a little bit more. So let me in ridiculous brevity try to outline the differences between the two. So in functional harmony, every chord and every note within a chord or a scale has a specific purpose in relation to the other chords. For example, it leads to the next chord. The most obvious example for this is a dominant chord leading to a tonic. So this G dominant chord really wants to go to a C major chord. So this kind of harmony is what's been used by far the most for the last, let's say, 400 years or so. Everything from Bach to most of the pop music you hear on the radio today follows the same basic set of rules. Let's hear another example for a chord progression where one chord leads to the next. This one's a 2-5-1. Same thing applies to melodies. The notes within a scale also lead from one chord to another. Some of them are even called guide tones because they guide us to a specific place within a melody. And then it leads to the one. Modal music is different in the sense that each chord and each scale stands more on its own. It doesn't necessarily lead anywhere. Oftentimes we only have one chord for an entire piece and the focus is on how each note sounds in relation to that chord or to the root. Examples for this type of music could be the vocal music of the Middle Ages, where the term church modes actually comes from, but also lots of electronic music, which, if you're interested in synthesizers, is probably of more interest to you. In a lot of electronic music, we come across tracks that only use one chord or one bass note and stay on it for a long time, so that definitely falls in the modal category. But enough of that, let's move on to the next scale. The next mode is the first minor mode, Dorian. I'm going through the same steps again. I'm lowering the next note, E to E flat. Let's listen to our new set of fifths. I'm putting the notes back within one octave. And I'm copying the interval structure to the variegate. Here's the root note played by the analog keys. And the sequence of chord inversions of the corresponding minor 7th chord. Occasionally there's a 9 in there. And the octatrack on drums. 
The note that most dominantly gives Dorian its character is the major sixth or the root plus nine semitones. Can you identify it within the random sequence by ear? Here's what it sounds like. Dorian is the only scale other than Lydian with no avoid notes. Again, this means no notes a semitone above the notes in the chord. You can rest on all the notes comfortably without the need to resolve anything. I guess we could look at it as the minor parallel to Lydian. To me at least, they sound related and similarly open. But the underlying chord here is a minor 7th chord. So it sounds warmer and more mellow to my ears than Lydian. Let's do some more ear training. Try to listen for the sixth note of the mode. It's a tritone above the third of the chord, so there's a good amount of tension. So this is Dorian. It might just be the most popular one for modal music. Let's move on to Aeolian, which we get to by lowering the A to an A flat. Let's have a look at its interval structure in close position. This one's often also called natural minor. Let's apply it to the very gate. And here's the bass. I added some short chord stabs on the mini lock here with just a minor chord. On the lights above the key here, you can see that for the bass line, this time I did not only use the root, but also the minor sixth, which is the characteristic note of Aeolian. Octatrack on drums again. We can easily hear that the more notes we lower, the darker things start to sound. The A flat here again is an avoid note, because it's only one semitone above the fifth. It sounds quite dissonant. Again, as a passing note, it's absolutely fine. I've got a short sequence prepared here, starting with the minor sixth, so typical of the Aeolian mode. Try to get a feel for its typical, very dark character. It's the A flat here. I'm gonna go through all the other notes of the Aeolian mode. Pay attention to how they all have a slightly different character. Here's that minor sixth again.
next I'm lowering the D to a D flat. This gives us all the notes of the Phrygian mode. I'm sure that by now you can easily tell that the more red notes we get, the darker things tend to sound. I'm applying the interval structure to the variegate and I'm adding a bass. Again, I'm choosing a bass line not only with the root, but this time I'm adding a minor second, the note so typical of the Phrygian mode. And the darker things sound, the closer we get to the realms of techno and such. The Phrygian mode, in my opinion, is really excellent for really dark and mean sounding stuff. Again, I'm adding a little sequence featuring the most important notes of Phrygian. I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes though. In my opinion, the more dissonant a scale gets, the less room it leaves to fill tracks with lots of different melodies and stuff, and it's oftentimes better to just stick to a bass line and maybe one little melody element. I'm gonna go through all of the notes of Phrygian now, so you can get a feel for what each one of them sounds like. And the minor second. One thing worth mentioning about the Phrygian scale is that both the root and the so typical minor second have a note a perfect fifth above, which is also in the scale. Which means for my bass line, for example, I could tune this to a fifth and it would sound really nice. I'm trying to achieve this here with the filter, but I'm only partly successful. So we already arrived at the last of the eight modes, which is Locrian. We get that by lowering the last note other than the root, the G to a G flat. The result of that is that as a underlying chord, we now get neither a minor nor a major chord, but a diminished one, which is really dissonant and unstable. I think I've never made any music in the Locrian mode, but I think this is as good an occasion as any to give this a try. So here's the Variegate ARP. And for a bass line, I chose a really busy one this time. I think this is because all the notes are so dissonant, it never feels right to rest on any of them for too long. Look at the lights above the keys again and you can see that the bass line uses the root, the minor second, the minor seventh and the diminished fifth. On a mini log here I've got this one chord stab playing a diminished chord. And again a beat from the octave track. I try to somehow make it equally dark to the scale it is playing to. And again, I added a little sequence on top. I tried a couple of different things here, but all the counterpoint attempts just resulted in a complete mess. So I just doubled parts of the bass line, a couple of octaves above. <laughs> 
So yeah, this is Snow Korean, probably not your first choice for a one chord or one mode piece, but an interesting one, definitely. Here's all the notes of Low Korean. Since this is the last one, here's an overview over all the scales we went through. On the left side, I listed the intervals I personally think stand out the most within each scale and are most responsible for their distinct character. On the right side, I listed the avoid notes for each scale and there's a, a bit more general agreement about what they are, even though there you might want to know that when it comes to the Dorian scale, some people think that the sixth is a avoid note because it's one semitone below a seventh, so if there's a seventh in the chord, it should be an avoid note. I don't share that opinion, but I guess it's good to know. That's all of them. Now we've been through all of the scales, and there's a good chance along the way you've been asking yourself, why so complicated? Why go through the circle of fifths and not just do it the way people usually first learn about these modes? By taking a C major scale, starting on the C, that's Ionian. Then starting on the D, that's Dorian. Starting on the E, that's Phrygian. Well, there's some good arguments for doing it that way. First of all, it's probably a bit easier to understand if you just want to know what the notes of a particular scale are. Plus, in a functional harmonics context, it kind of makes sense because when we're playing a two chord, the scale that fits that chord is going to be Dorian. But in a modal context, that's completely different. When we look at a piece in a Dorian mode, for example, the chord that we're playing to is not the two chord, it's the one chord. So just taking a major scale and shifting the starting point from the first degree to the second and to the third and so on, is kind of dangerous because oftentimes the scales are still going to sound to us like a major scale, which they're really not when we're talking about modal music. This is the reason why I think it's better for a understanding of what the character of each scale really is to go through them in a circle of fifths and have the same starting point each time. Plus, it shows you that there really is a logic to how they sound, that they go from bright to dark, depending on how many notes we lower in relation to our root, which is always going to be the same. I hope that makes sense to you. So now that we're close to the end, if I had to narrow it down to a couple of takeaways from this, it's each mode has a really distinct character, which is the important thing to know about the mode. There's a logic to why the modes sound brighter or darker, and we can easily see that when we arrange them in a circle of fifths. Lastly, I want to mention that with all things music theory, it's just a tool to help you maybe solve a problem or two or to communicate with others. But at the end of the day, just playing a note and seeing if it feels right is the best way to go. If it feels right, it's probably the right one. If it doesn't, probably not. So I think that's a good note to end on. So thank you for watching and bye-bye.